one VCD from log of fitness. Today, we're going to go over one of the most common kettlebell exercises, the kettlebell swings, and I will teach you how to prep properly for it. Okay, so the first thing that you want to be able to do is to touch your toes with your legs somewhat straight. Okay, and the reason why is that if you can't do that, you really have no business doing your swings, but you won't be able to fight the right muscles at the proper time, and your lower back is probably going to be carrying way too much. So in order to help you with that mobility, we're going to do uh, an elevated toe touch. Okay, so you're going to choose something that you can use to elevate the front of your foot, of your feet, actually, both of them, uh, roughly by one inch or one and a half. And you're going to start by putting that underneath your toes. That way it's going to stretch your calves a little bit, which is where a lot of people carry their tightness, especially if you run a lot. And from here, you're just going to move your bum back and try to touch your toes. And you're just going to do that four or five times, holding the position on the bottom roughly for five to ten seconds. So I won't hold it here, just for the purpose of this video. But this is to give you an idea of how to stretch that posterior chain. That's one thing you can do. The second thing, depending on where your tightness is, you're going to elevate your heels. So you're going to have your heels on that little block of the dumbbells, and you're just going to try and touch your toes, keeping your legs as straight as possible. This one is going to stretch a bit further up in the posterior chain. And it depend, depending where your tight is going to help you get a proper toe touch. Same thing, hold the stretch for roughly 10 seconds, come up, get a little bit, and do 4 to 5 reps. So once you are able to touch your toes, then we can work on a proper hinge. Okay? So for the hinge, you're just going to have your feet roughly hip width apart and you're going to drive your bum back, and that's what's going to help you make room to lower your chest. Okay? And the other thing that you want to do is to always keep that spine neutral, so keep that chest out, engage your abs, move your bum as far back as you can, keeping those heels on the floor. And roughly you want to start where the middle of your forearms reaches the front of your knees. Okay? So right now my spine is neutral, and I'm able to do a proper kettlebell swing. Once you have that pattern on lockdown with no weight, then you can start adding weight. So I'm going to grab a kettlebell and I'm going to start with the deadlift. The deadlift is just a very slow kettlebell swings. We can really focus on the form. So I'm going to have the kettlebell between my ankles and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to work on that hinge. I'm going to grab the bell, keep my spine neutral, drive through my heels and push my hips forward. So I move my hips back, keep my back in neutral, and then try to the heels, push my hips forward. You can probably 10 to 12 reps of this, and then you're almost ready for the kettlebell swings. Uh, the next thing we're gonna work on is a single leg, single arm, sorry, deadlift or a suitcase deadlift. And the reason why we do this is we the kettlebell work, we often work one kettlebell at a time with one arm. So you want to be able to control that hinge even though that kettlebell is pulling you down. Okay, so I use my abs and my back and my glutes to help me keep that back straight and not rotating at the or on the spine, which is even worse. Same thing, 10 to 12 reps on one side and then 10 to 12 reps on the other side. Okay? Again, really focus on keeping that chest straight. Do not rotate. That's asking for trouble down the road. And the last thing that you want to do is to be able to hold a plank, right? Because the end position of the swing is pretty much a vertical plank, right? So here, I want to squeeze my lats, my abs, my glutes, and my quads to be perfectly tight. So in order to work on that movement, or position rather, you have your hands on the floor, and from here, you have a relaxed leg, and then you tighten your lats, your abs, your glutes, and your quads. And you hold this for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and you relax. And again, lats, abs, glutes, and quads. And relax. And you can do that five to six times. It's going to be like a one in the neck. And, uh, and that's it. If you can master all these positions and movements, you're going to be able to do a proper canvas swing and not get hurt. 
see you guys in the next video.